Hi Gators and welcome back to my channel. Today we are off to Romania to look at the case of Yurika Masuno, who went there in 2012 to teach Japanese. Unfortunately, she was brutally killed pretty much as soon as she got there. Let's investigate. Moving abroad is meant to be an exciting time. One gets to know a different culture, make lifelong friends, gain independence, and taste delicious food. And it is really through new experiences that we get to truly appreciate the best life has to offer. Masuno Yurika, a 20-year-old student from Japan, felt up to this new adventure. She was excited, a bit nervous, but mostly looking forward to starting life overseas. Her destination? Romania. But what was to be one of the most special times in her life, sadly, ended in tragedy. It is the year 2012, and Masuno Yurika is 20 years of age. That year, Yurika, who hailed from Takarazuka City, Hyogo Prefecture, was still a university student at Tokyo Sacred Heart University. Yurika had an affinity for the color pink, the One Piece manga series, and teddy bears. In her private time, she liked to take part in tea ceremonies, play the violin, and listen to classical music. But not only was she a very talented young lady, she also had big dreams. More specifically, she dreamt of becoming a flight attendant, and in order to do so, she felt it was very beneficial to move abroad and gain a global mindset, work on her English a little bit. In addition to studying at university, Yurika was also a member of the student organization ISEG. ISEG is a Sweden-based international youth-run, non-governmental and not-for-profit organization that provides young people with leadership development, cross-cultural internships and global volunteer exchange experiences. And it is through this organization that she applied for an exchange program called Language School, which would allow her to teach Japanese in Romania. And she was accepted. In fact, she had secured an internship in Romania's sixth largest city, Craiova, and was to depart Japan on August 14, 2012. Her flight was to depart from Tokyo's Narita airport and take her to Romania via Vienna. In the days leading up to her departure, she exchanged a few messages with her close friend, and she informed them that she was feeling anxious about her upcoming trip, something that is quite normal. Moving abroad is a big step into the unknown, and Yurika was only 20 years old. In one text, sent on August the 8th, she gushed about the kindness of the Romanian people. On the day of her departure, August the 14th, she then said that she is feeling both excited and anxious, telling her friend that those two emotions can coexist just fine. She had a point there. Yurika also remarked how as time went on, her anxiety heightened, and had she not come to see the other members off, she'd have backed out. At this point, her chest began to hurt from all the anxiety, and Yurika was on the verge of vomiting, saying she experienced this feeling for the very first time. Again, moving abroad, huge step. She then called her friend and said that speaking to them and crying on the phone had actually helped calm her down a little. Yurika also said that nothing else was the matter and it really was just the unknown of the whole situation and going there all alone that made her anxious. However, once she had arrived in Vienna on August the 15th, she felt a lot calmer and texted her friend that she was excited to do some sightseeing in the city and then head to Bucharest, Romania's capital. Yurika then spent the day shopping and viewing the sights in Vienna as planned, but later on, she got in touch with her friend again and expressed feelings of worry. She said that she was especially worried about having to take the night train alone a journey that would take three hours after arriving in Romania. The night train was supposed to take her from Bucharest to Craiova. 
Yurika said that having to do that, and possibly even missing the connection, was the root of her anxiety in that moment, and that it would be a miracle if she made it in time for the train. Yurika eventually left Vienna that evening, and landed in Bucharest Henry Coanda International Airport at around 8pm local time. She had not organized for anyone to wait for her or pick her up, as she had decided to take the night train and handle matters herself. When she landed in Bucharest after an hour and a half, she began to look around for the best way to get to the city's train station. And this is when she was approached by 26-year-old Vlad Nicole, who unbeknownst to her, had been lurking in the shadows. Vlad, upon seeing beautiful Eureka look around the airport's arrival all by herself, walked up to her and offered her a ride to the train station, posing as a taxi driver. And unfortunately, Eureka accepted the ride. The two were then actually caught on CCTV getting into the same vehicle. Now, Craiova is located around 240 kilometers or 150 miles west of Bucharest. But when Eureka gets into the car, Vlad drives in the opposite direction. Whether Eureka noticed this or not is unknown. But just five minutes into their drive, Vlad parks up at a local bus stop located on a main road. This bus stop was surrounded by forests on both sides and had little to no traffic at night. Perhaps he told her that a bus would be more convenient after all to get her to get out of the car. Yurika never arrived at the language school in Craiova and nobody heard from her until August the 17th, two days after her arrival in the country. And sadly, it wasn't good news. Two days after she went missing, Yurika was found dead near the bus stop she had exited at before. She was found just a few meters from the main road in the woods. Her hands had been tied with a rope and her body had been covered with leaves. Her suitcase was found around 60 meters or 197 feet away from her body. The money she had with her, as well as her phone and camera, had been stolen. The subsequent autopsy revealed that Yurika had been taken advantage of multiple times in the most horrific ways imaginable, and all this while alive. She was stabbed in the chest and abdomen, violated and strangled. The bruises on her body suggest that this was a most violent attack and that she had fought her perpetrator to the end, desperate to survive. There is an uncensored autopsy report circulating online that describes the horrific nature of her killing in greater detail. I will not go into that amount of detail here, as it is extremely gruesome, but you can look it up online, of course. Just four hours after Yurika was found, Vlad was taken into custody by police. While you could argue that the police secured him rather fast, there was a sad reason for that. Namely, Vlad had already been a suspect in several robbery and molestation cases. And not only were they caught on CCTV at the airport, Vlad, who was unemployed, also stole her mobile phone, which authorities were able to track, and tried to sell her camera. He then also confirmed that he had dropped Yurika off at that bus stop on the 15th. Despite confirming he had been with her, Vlad insisted that he had nothing to do with the murder. On September the 6th, Vlad's DNA was then matched to DNA found on Yurika's body and clothes. The bite marks left on her body also proved the match. Later investigations also found that he had sexually molested and murdered a 73-year-old retired woman just 10 days prior to Eureka. Before that, he had robbed and attempted to molest a woman in February 2011. That same month, he had also robbed and molested an 85-year-old woman. In March 2012, he had robbed, molested and murdered an 89-year-old woman. In April 2012, he had then broken into the home of yet another woman and tried to molest her too, but failed to do so. The crimes were committed both in Bucharest and outside of the city. His arrest for Eureka's murder was understandably not his first, but he had not been proven guilty for any of the previous murders he had committed before. Some reports also speculated that Romania being a poor country looked the other way, as putting him behind bars would have been a costly affair. Vlad subsequently failed a polygraph test and was sentenced to life behind bars, or the equivalent of 25 years, 
by the Bucharest Court of Appeals in 2010 for the murder of three women, including Yurika, multiple robberies and other crimes involving women. He is currently incarcerated in Romania's Juju Penitentiary and it's safe to say he is not having the time of his life. Shortly after his imprisonment, Vlad's brother took his own life and his sister expressed her worries about her remaining brother's situation in prison. Vlad apparently fell ill in prison. He complained of headaches, got scabies from not washing, has been beaten up and had a surgery to top it all off. He has of course used his difficult time in prison as a reason to be let out, which by the way, he could be in 10 years time if he behaves well. So far, the law has not deemed his headaches worthy of an early release, so Vlad has gone on a hunger strike to double down on his efforts. Spoiler, his ass is still in prison. According to his family, he has become unrecognizable behind bars. Who cares? Following the murder and the succeeding media reports, the public demanded that both Isaac Japan and Romania should be held accountable for the tragedy to some degree. But despite this public uproar, the organization never apologized. Very sadly, Yurika herself was not only the victim of a horrific crime, but also of victim blaming, as countless reports flooded in, blaming the poor girl for hitching a ride with a stranger in a foreign country. It is important to remember that Yurika hailed from Japan, a very safe country. In fact, reports of crimes such as theft are so low that locals leave belongings unaccompanied in cafes and bars. In contrast, targeting overseas tourists at airports is not uncommon in Romania and very often part of organized crime. Yurika also didn't speak a lot of English or know much about Romania, so finding the best way to a destination she had never visited before was no easy feat. Moreover, grabbing a taxi at an airport should be a safe way for tourists to travel and most of us would know a thing about checking the validity of those cab drivers or their cars. But this is all the information I have on this case. May Yurika rest in peace. And to you Gators, thank you for watching as always and see you next week. Bye.